There are 25 different finishes you can get on a knife in CSGO, and in this video, we're going to be asking the question, which one is the best? I've collected 3,000 votes from the community on the best and worst knife finishes in existence, and I'm going to be using it to rank them from the worst finish to the best. What's the community's favourite knife finishes? Well, we are going to find out. Now, this video is sponsored by Skinport, the easy to use skins marketplace where you can sell your skins for real cash. Skinport offers a huge range of skins, over 160,000 of them, at prices miles cheaper than the Steam market, as much as 30% off. You can also purchase skins in an instant, just pick the skin you want and buy it. There's no need to deposit first and no hidden fees. Oh, and if you're selling, Skinport has a super low selling fee of just 6% for items over $1,000 and for private listings, making it an awesome marketplace to sell on. Cash out is super quick and handled by bank transfer, and it's also super highly rated on Trustpilot with a 4.9 out of five star rating. So an awesome place to buy and sell skins. Check it out, link is in the description. So I used a very simple scoring system to rank these knives, one point for every vote towards them being the best knife, and one point off for every vote from being the worst knife. And with that explained, we can get straight into the ranking. So in last place, we have the Safari Mesh. Now, why is this particular knife last? Well, out of the three bland green finishes Valve has added that no one likes, this one is by far the best known, which meant it got BTFO when it came to votes for being the worst knife, putting it in last place. And I don't have much else to say about this bit of garbage, other than that, it was close. Because in second last place, we've got the Scorched. Ooh, dark grey on light grey, who doesn't love that? Well, pretty much no one, because there was only one vote for this as the best knife, and I'm pretty sure that guy must have misclicked. This finish has no redeeming features, in fact, I think it is worse than the Safari Mesh, but it's less well known and therefore less hated, which is why it escaped last place by a handful of points. Now, for 23rd place, we've got the Rust Coat. It needs no introduction. It is literally covered in rust. Isn't, isn't that cool? Who doesn't want a knife covered in rust? Let's see what we get. Oh! oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I definitely don't, but this finish is kind of saved, safe from being dead last anyway, by the fact that it's so bad, it's kind of good. Well, it's it's still not really good, but at least its badness has some novelty value, which is why I think it only came third last. Now, in 22nd place, we've got the Forest Dandy Pad. Now, this is basically the Safari Mesh, except less well known, so we didn't get as many votes against it, but I still think it sucks, so we're gonna go on to the next finish. And in 21st spot, we've got the Urban Mast, and I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't mind this one. It's the first knife so far that I think is objectively not bad, but it's also objectively gray on gray, which is probably why so many people voted against it. When you're going up against actual colorful knives, which by the way is most of this list, gray on gray just doesn't cut it. So it's probably not a surprise seeing it down here. Anyway, in 20th place, We've got the Boreal Forest. Now, this is basically the last green camo finish, but it's also the least well known of the three of them, which is probably why it got voted down a lot less. However, it still sucks, so I'm gonna move on. Now, in 19th place is the Stained. Now, like most of the finishes so far, this is another one of the dull OG finishes Valve mistakenly thought people would like. As the name suggests, it is Stained, apparently with lemon and mustard, okay. And I mean, who wouldn't want to pay hundreds of dollars for a knife that's stained with lemon and mustard? You know, no, I would. But moving on from that, in 18th spot, we get our first gamma knife, the Brightwater. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I, I like all the gamma knives and I kind of like this one too. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh! Oh! Ready. Well, sometimes, but Either way, it's fairly clear I'm in the minority, and it is kind of a dull finish. It's not super striking, the colors are pretty desaturated, so maybe it's not really a surprise no one is that interested in it. It also doesn't look too good when it's a bit worn either, which is probably why I got a lot of votes against it. So 17th spot is the freehand. Now, this is another gamma knife, and 
Honestly, I'm a bit surprised to see this one so far down the list. I've always felt freehand knives were this kind of interesting, if a bit underwhelming pattern-based skin. And by the way, the pattern says Sylph, if you're wondering. I don't think it means anything, although I thought I'd mention it. But there were a lot of votes against this thing. I guess people just don't like the purple and silver combination. And while I might not put it there, the people have spoken, and that's why it's down the bottom of the list. Now, sixth thing spot is Damascus Steel. This is the first finish to get a positive score, and it's based around an actual type of steel that was historically made in the Middle East, which may have inspired Valerian Steel in the Song of Ice and Fire, and it's distinguished by a modelled appearance, which CSGO faithfully recreates. Although, unfortunately, the result is a pretty underwhelming knife that was met with a collective meh in the poll. Not many people voted for it or against it, which kind of seems fair to me. It's just like a bright vanilla knife. Not bad, but not that great either. And speaking of underwhelming steel finishes, well, the next skin in the rankings is the blue steel. It's steel, and it's blue. Well, in fairness, it's not actually that bad of a knife. I mean, I unboxed one on a stream recently. It's not that bad. It's just not great either, which again, is why it's sitting here with a net eight points and just very few votes in general. I don't really have anything else to say about it other than that. It's just, it is what it looks like. Now in 14th spot, we've got the knight. This is a pretty bland black finish. Looks garbage and battle scarred admittedly, but most of the time it's kind of just bland but respectable. So no one really ended up voting for it or against it, leaving it in the middle of the list, which seems about right. Anyway, 13th spot is the Ultraviolet. And the Ultraviolet is really a tale of two worlds. There's the good condition version that looks nice, and then there's the bad condition version. Jesus and one for- uh, I got a knife, knife, uh, knife! What? Already? <laughs> you're lying. You're, you're lying. You're, you're Come, on. Come on. What are we excited about? It looks like crap. Still, if you get them in a not bad condition, these things are a pretty slick and respectable finish. They might not be mind boggling, but they're definitely not bad knives either. And 13th spot seems about right. Anyway. Coming in in 12th spot, we have the Case Hardened, and this is a finish of extremes, from the million dollar crane but blue gem to your average splotchy mess of a skin which isn't particularly striking in any way, shape or form. And in many respects, this finish's greatest strength is also its greatest weakness. Blue gems can be absolutely stunning, but most Case Hardened knives are not blue gems, and are just they've seen in kind of garbage by comparison. It's still rated pretty well, but the fact that there's such a contrast between the different patterns probably prevented it from climbing any higher. So 11th spot was taken out by the Black Laminate and this knife was really defined by how much people didn't dislike it. Only 10 people voted it as the worst knife in CSGO which allowed it to comfortably slip into the top half of the list. And it's not hard to see why either. This skin is just classy. It's the sort of thing that very, very few people are gonna have an issue with and a lot are gonna like, which is probably why this finish ended up doing so well. Now, in 10th spot, we have the vanilla knives, i.e. the knife with no finishes at all. A lot of people apparently voted for this thing, despite what I was expecting. Apparently a lot of people like a knife that just looks like a knife. Now, I can't say I understand that line of thinking, but the numbers don't lie. And since I don't really have anything else to add here, I think we can move on to the next finish. And in ninth place, we have the Slaughter Knives. Now, Slaughter Knives are a type of knife that are way past their heyday. I think most people lost interest in them around 2015. They used to be a big deal. People used to care a lot about their patterns. My favorite was definitely the Seed the Sloth pattern. That was my number one. But these days, there's not much interest in them. But that combined with their relatively nice finish might explain why they got the least votes for the worst knife in the entire poll, which really helped them a lot in claiming a good spawn on the list. Now, eighth spot is the Autotronic. This one is definitely a favorite of mine. It's another Gamma Knife and is also the first type of knife I ever unboxed. And it's simple red and silver finish has a lot going for it. There was only 13 votes against this guy, barely any. And while they definitely are flashier knives, this one is still solid. And I think it really deserves its spot on this list. Anyway, Seventh place is the Crimson Web, and this is a pretty legendary type of finish. It's very well known, it gets very expensive, it's got this striking red appearance, so it ticks a lot of the boxes. 
But it does have a bit of a problem in the fact that it often comes in quite a poor wear value and is kind of scuffed as a result. And this probably weighed it down enough to keep it out of the top five. Although it's definitely still clear that a lot of people like this finish and I definitely agree with them too. Now, in sixth spot, we have the Lore. Now, the Lore is a skin from the Gamma Collection, and it's also just a genuinely striking and badass skin all around. In fact, dare I say it, I think it's kind of underrated, even in sixth spot. In fact, like Crimson Webs, its main downside is that it's kind of scuffed in higher wear values, which kind of sucks, and probably what keeps it from going any higher. But that's a pretty good segue for fifth spot, because in fifth position, we have the tiger tooth. You're not, exactly, you're not yeah. on Just, stream. So oh, like, I already deleted it. Oh, oh, another knife. Another oh, oh, stat track talent tiger tooth. Stat track talent tiger tooth. Now, the Tiger Tooth is very, very similar to Allure. It's very similar color, just a bit more orange. It is found on a wider range of knives, including things like the butterfly knife, which admittedly is pretty cool and a real plus for it, but it also, basically never comes in a bad condition. It's almost always factory new, which is another plus with this thing. You're always getting great quality. And I think that's what's really allowed it to crack the top five. Now, fourth spot is a classic CSGO finish, the original top tier knife finish, the fade, simple, elegant, pattern based, meaning there's better and worse fade finishes for collectors who just love that, and just downright iconic. Skins like the Karambit Fade command huge prices considering how relatively common they are, and in many respects, this finish is only behind things like the Dragon or the Howl in terms of just how well known it is. However, the Thunder still has been stolen from it by a couple of newer, flashier skins, and we're gonna check them out as we break into the top three. And third spot is the Fade's younger, better looking cousin, the Marble Fade. Brighter, more colorful, and with more interesting patterns, including outright famous stuff like the fire and ice. This was able to fight its way above the original fade. I think five years ago, we would have gotten different results, but these days, it's the marble fade that's winning out. And I gotta say, I really do like this thing, but not as much as I like two other finishes, and they just happen to be the two that are left. So in second spot, we have the Gamma Doppler. This is a fantastic knife in so many ways, and I've had some real good experiences with it too. No, no, and here we go, here we go, here we go, and it's a Gamma Doppler. <laughs> but what's good about it isn't so much my luck, but the patterns, there are four variants, and they are great, really great. They, they look good in the sun, they're subtle, but also striking. Then there's also the Death by Green version, the Emerald, one of the most expensive knives in the game, and this finishes diversity and just general awesomeness is its real strength. But at the end of the day, it was beaten out by a lot by a finish that offered even more, the original Doppler. This thing has everything the Gamma Doppler offers and more. It's found on nine extra knives that the Gamma Doppler isn't. And in addition to its four thick but striking phase finishes, it's also got a Sapphire variant and a Ruby variant and a Black Pearl variant. I think it's the Sapphire that really makes this thing number one. Aside from the very best blue gems, it's clearly the most valuable knife in CSGO, but either way, the vote just wasn't close. The Doppler finish is CSGO's clear number one, and being a massive Doppler fan myself, I don't think I could agree more with it. I normally did 300 cases, didn't get a single red, so I got another knife, knife, Talon Doppler, Talon Doppler. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Massively appreciated. Otherwise, trust the numbers, not your gut. I'm Jesus. Thanks for watching. See ya.